How's it going? So in this video I'm going to be showing you how to set up a dual boot operating system on a pre-installed Windows 8. Um, before you go about setting up a dual boot operating system you need to make sure that your hard drive has enough storage space and also make sure you back up anything valuable at all. This is just an extra precaution but if this is your main drive then I would recommend that you back it up. A USB flash drive or a DVD disc is generally used for installation. Um, if you have a copy of the OS and DVD, then I do recommend you use it. However, for this tutorial, I'll be using the flash drive as demonstration. The next thing you need to do is download two softwares, AOMI Partition and Power ISO as well. Both of these softwares are extremely useful and most importantly they're safe and also free. Your Windows copy should be in ISO format. An ISO file is basically an image of a CD or DVD. A link for both of these softwares will be in the description. I really do recommend that you download both of them. However, feel free to use other third party apps or whatever Windows has to offer such as um, disk management. So next you need to prepare your local hard drive for installation of your desired operating system. In this case Windows 10 will be installed onto the hard drive. But first a reasonable amount of storage space must be partitioned for the hard drive. Um, the Iomi partition tool will be used for this step. If you plan on using Windows disk management instead, um, you might run into an error telling you that there's not enough space on your hard disk, um, whereas you actually do have enough space, and that's due to other drives such as your pre-partition recovery drives and other hidden drives. However, this is mainly an issue with PCs that have a pre-installed Windows, so if you have a retail PC, you're more than likely going to run into this problem. To partition your hard drive, run the Yomi partition tool as administrator. Um, once the tool opens up, you'll see a few disk partitions. Especially if the computer is a retail PC, just make sure you select your local hard disk, which always has the drive letter C. Um, now what you need to do is right click on the local disk and select split partition. The drive you're partitioning from will be on the left and the new partition is on the right. Um, all you have to do is enter the required amount, in this case 200 gigs, and then simply click OK. Other changes can be made to the new partition, such as changing the drive letter. However, please be careful you don't change it to a drive letter already on your system. Um, then click at the top left and a new box will appear showing the estimated time of the partition to complete. Uh, click proceed and then restart the computer. AOMI partition will restart in a pre-OS mode. Please make sure your PC does not switch off during the process. When the restarting process has completed, the new drive should be visible on your PC. Insert the USB flash drive into the PC. Make sure the OS you plan on installing is in ISO format. To check this, you can right click on the file to view the properties and the file type should be .iso. Um, then all you have to do is run Power ISO as an administrator and then locate the tool section at the top of the page. Click on create a bootable device locate a source image file and the file should be the ISO copy of the operating system. Select the inserted flash drive as the destination USB, choose USB HDD as the write method and then click start. Now remember the original name of the USB will probably come up so make sure you choose the right one and the USB flash drive is going to be formatted as well so everything will be erased. Then all you have to do is click OK and wait for the process to complete. So we're now at the final step and this is probably the most difficult step out of the whole process. Uh, however, if you follow this step, it should be pretty much straightforward for most people. So the first thing you need to do is make sure your PC is turned off, then turn it back on. This is a HP laptop, so if you have a HP, just press escape key 
So once you're in the startup menu, hit F10 to get into the BIOS. You could just hit F10 from the beginning to get into the BIOS. If you know the function button for your um, BIOS, then hit it straight away. So once you're in the BIOS, um, there's a couple of things I need you to change, and you should follow the exact same step. Um, this will be a little bit different if you're on a different laptop or desktop, but they're pretty much the same. So just go into the boot option. And the first thing you need to actually look for in your BIOS is where it says Secure Boot. If it's enabled, I want you to disable that. The reason why it should be disabled is because Secure Boot will basically think the USB you're going to boot the operating system from um, is a malicious software. So it will basically not show up when you're trying to boot up. Then you need to change the legacy support to Enable just in case if you have like an older PC so you need to change the UEFI boot order and the legacy boot order as well the most important one is the UEFI and I'll explain why later on and um, just basically look for the one that says USB and key so F6 will move it to the top and then I want to do the same for the legacy as well now this isn't the most important but just in case you should move the legacy as well to the top so to save you hit F10 so save and exit and then confirm the reason why you get this message is because you disabled secure boot so it's like an added protection to verify whether you're a human or not so you just enter a code so mine is 3302 and then enter just keep pressing escape so at this point you need to make sure the USB flash drive is inserted into the PC and once you're in the startup menu again uh, you just select F9 for the boot device options and now you'll see all the boot devices that are connected to the PC now for some people the flash drive might show up twice now the reason why I said the UEFI one is the most important um, is because I want you to select the one that says UEFI then hit enter and then the Windows Boot Manager will show up for you to install your operating system. So I have a Windows 10 32-bit and 64-bit. Now I want to install the 64-bit, so I hit Enter. So from here on, it's pretty much self-explanatory until we get to a section about partitioning. Once you hit Install Now, you'll get to the Windows Setup section and you just simply choose Custom Install and then select the partition that you made. In this case, it's 200 gigs and the file type will generally be primary. So make sure you select the correct one. Now, remember when I told you to choose UEFI for the flash drive? Well, that's because if you've previously installed an operating system onto the partition, you might not be able to proceed because of GPT. And I'll attach a link for what that is. Um, but yeah, basically when you select UEFI, you can now copy it onto the partition. Once the copying process has completed, you'll be brought back to the start of the window setup screen. Just simply exit and restart your PC. When your PC restarts, you'll now have the option to choose which operating system you'd like to boot. So we're going to choose Windows 10 because that's the operating system we've just installed. And then from here on, the rest is entirely up to you to customize your new Windows installation. Um, this will be just like when you buy the PC for the first time and then you have to choose your settings, choose your usernames, etc, etc. Um, I guess that's really it for the video. and. I guess now you can see that Windows 10 is setting up properly and now it is installed onto my PC. So that's how you set up a dual boot operating system. If you guys have any questions at all relating to yours, feel free to ask me and I'm sure I'll be able to help you. Thanks.